Do you have questions about the tattoo industry, artists, and processes? Stay tuned while I answer some of my followers' questions. Hey guys, I'm Hayley Tattooer and this is Tattoo Talk. So first up, quick disclaimer, you might notice that I've got a bit of a lisp. It's because I'm on my second round of adult Invisalign, so I've just started them. My speech is still a little bit out, so sorry about that. So I put out to my Instagram followers if they had any questions that they wanted a tattoo artist to answer regarding the industry, processes, that kind of thing. So here are some of the questions that I got. All right, do tattoo artists get offended when you see other artists? So this is a good question. It does stem back to like a little bit of an old taboo in the industry. So many, many years ago, you would just seek out a quality tattooer and just get them to do all of your ideas. But now the industry is a little bit different. We tend to seek out artists that specialize in a specific style that we want. So it's not so competitive anymore when you uh, shop between artists to find the best person for that particular piece. The only time there is a little bit of a taboo is when you have a piece started by one artist and then you, if you sort out another artist to complete that piece, it's kind of ripping off the first artist for all the design work that they put in and everything like that. There are exceptions to this, of course, if the first artist becomes unavailable or if the work quality is poor, but uh, it does tend to upset artists if you take their work elsewhere to have it completed. But otherwise, I'm sure if you have an artist that you're generally loyal to, but you did want to go and collect a piece from another specific artist, if you talk to them and just told them, hey, I've got this other artist I really look up to, I'd love to get a piece off them, are you cool with that? And I'm sure they will be totally fine, but it's completely not necessary to, to ask your tattoo artist. Thoughts on mixing tattoo styles. So. Mixing tattoo styles is a bit of a tricky one. There are do's and don'ts. Um, generally, I'd like to say keep to the same style for one particular piece. So if you're doing a small piece, a medium piece, or a large cohesive piece that is covering say a sleeve area or a leg sleeve, I would say try and stick to the one style and possibly the one theme for that piece. If you've got, say, a leg sleeve made up of small pieces that are interacting with each other, then it's fine to mix styles. If you've got a traditional piece, but next to it you want to put a realism piece and it's a separate piece, it doesn't flow together, then that's totally fine. It all comes down to the overall aesthetic that you want to create at the end of your tattoo journey or further down your tattoo journey. If you want things to look super, super neat, it is preferable just to stick with one style of tattoo per area of the body. We are seeing new sort of artistic developments where tattoo artists are merging styles within one tattoo. So you may have sort of like a colour realism portrait framed out by traditional flowers at the bottom. And that's fantastic. That's a really great example of mixing styles. But when it's done unintentionally or you have multiple artists working on one piece or one area, sometimes if the piece is intended to flow together and merge together, that's when it can start being a little bit messy. All right, what is my opinion on numbing creams? This is another good question and I'm going to do an entire video, probably an entire video series on numbing cream for tattoos. But um, to condense it down, I believe that numbing creams are not a perfect fix. They definitely are there to assist you in the overall process if need be, but they are not there to completely take away the pain. Nothing can really do that. When you apply a topical anesthetic, it will numb the area, but as soon as you start tattooing over the area, the numbness starts to be removed and break down. And as soon as the artist goes in for shading or coloring or anything like that works around that area again, there's no more numbness. And in some circumstances, you can re-numb the area. It really depends on the style of the piece as to whether it's like an outline and then shading kind of deal, or if it's a realism kind of deal, you probably can't re-numb an area unless it's been worked over or had the first pass because it doesn't have outlines so if you applied numbing cream over the stencil it would completely wipe off 
And another thing worth mentioning is that if you do go into a tattoo thinking, no worries, it's going to be numb, I'm totally fine, you're not mentally prepared for the pain when it does wear off. It is much better, in my opinion, for you to go into a tattoo session with the mentality that, yes, it's going to be painful, I will deal with it as much as I can. If I get to the point where I can't push through to the end of my appointment, that's when we use the numbing cream. When you're really, really at the end of your tether and you have to sit still and you really have to push through to get that job done, that's when you bring out the numbing cream. It's really a last case kind of thing. I've got plenty of clients that use it straight up and uh, I've had varying degrees of of healing usually it heals pretty good it depends on what you use but it's it's up to you talk to your artist if they're happy for you to use numbing cream from the start and you really really feel like you need it they will usually work to your needs we also want you guys to sit well we're not intentionally putting people through pain we don't enjoy most of us don't enjoy putting people through pain. So if there is something that we can do that will make it easier for you, we're going to do it. But sometimes that's not always starting with numbing cream. What is the protocol on getting another artist to fix up an existing tattoo from someone else? So I kind of touched on this a little bit before, but if you've started a tattoo with somebody and you're really, really unhappy with the progress of it and you would like somebody else to continue it, I would probably say if it is kind of at the point where it may, the original artist may be able to fix it, just approach them and just say, listen, I'm not entirely sure if this is how it was meant to be or it's not how I envisioned it. Is there anything that we can do to move it more towards this style that I want when we complete it? If the quality of the tattoo is actually really, really poor and you don't want to continue the tattoo with that artist, I would say just to scope out different artists in the area, ask them what their opinion is on fixing other people's tattoos. Not every tattoo artist will do it because if there's something that's a little bit crappy to start off with and somebody has to come in and try and save the day, it's never going to be as good as it could have been if you had sought out that artist to begin with. So not everyone likes to put their name to fix up jobs, but some artists really, really enjoy the challenge of fix up jobs. So if you seek out a couple of artists, check their portfolios to make sure their work is also up to the standard that you're expecting and just say, hey, I've got this tattoo. Are you interested in fixing it? Is there anything that you can do? So you kind of just have to feel out the situation. If it's something that can be resolved with the original artist, see if you can go down that route. If it definitely cannot be resolved by that artist, seek out a good quality artist that's happy to do fix up work. So the next question is about designs. What if I don't know what I want and I just tell the artist, just go for it, whatever you want. So this is a touchy subject in the industry because tattoo artists have a kind of kinky sense of humor. We've worked in rough shops, lots of swearing, gutter talk, the most ridiculous banter that you can imagine. So when you say whatever you want, it's kind of like whatever you want. So if you were approaching an artist you loved their work, you loved their style, you trust them implicitly, you think that they'll do a great job of whatever you, you know, whatever they want to do. Approach it in a more sensible manner. Pick a theme, pick one piece of content for the artist to base it around because unless that artist knows you and has known you for 10 years, it's really a heavy decision for us to choose what we're going to put on you. So if you can approach the artist and say, I love your style, but I'm looking for an animal themed piece. I'm happy for you to take it from there and do whatever you want. This is where I want it. This is how big it is. You take it from there. That would definitely be a better way to approach it in my opinion. In my experience, a lot of people that think they want to leave full artistic control up to the artist, you know, the artist might go back and be like, this is great. I've always wanted to do this spends like six hours drawing it out, says to the client, this is what I've prepared for you. And then the client's just like, well, um, yeah, that's not uh, what I had in mind. I actually really don't like it. So people think that they want to leave full artistic control up to the artist, but in a lot of cases, they probably don't. So yeah, I would definitely say go to your artist with at least one theme or one piece of content for that tattoo and make sure you check that artist's style. Go to their Instagram page, scroll through all the pictures of tattoos, 
Most of them are gonna look the same style. Do you like that style? Yes, then approach them. I've done an entire video on choosing your tattoo artist, so just visit that for way more tips on that. So what app do you use to draw your tattoos? So if you follow me on Instagram, you probably see in my stories here and there um, a time-lapse video of my drawing, because I do all of my artwork digitally, all of my composition, all of my alterations, they're all done digitally. So I use an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil and the app that I use is called Procreate. Are all tattoo artists drug dealers and bikies? Well, to answer that question, no. I think the tattoo industry really got lobbed with this mentality from you know, 20, 30 years ago when people that had tattoos were criminals and you walked into a tattoo parlor and it was kind of seedy and kind of a little bit dark. And yeah, there were a lot of tattoo parlors that were run by motorcycle gangs and that kind of thing, but it's definitely not like that now. Especially in Australia, we have new legislation where the government really, really strongly checks in where we have to be completely licensed. To own a studio, I actually have to get fingerprinted and ID checked and have an interview with the federal drug and crime unit thing. It's pretty intense, but definitely not. Tattoo artists are not all bikies and drug dealers. I would actually go ahead and say that the very, very small minority are. I think it's safe to say that in 2019, a lot of the tattoo industry is really about the art. So your tattoo artists are most likely a quiet, reserved, art nerd kid from way back that, you know, got into the industry and developed their skills into a tattooing career. So that's that background. That's not to say that we aren't all seedy. How to find an artist that will do a specific style in regional areas. I've looked at so many portfolios. So I do touch on that in choosing your artist. If you live in a regional area and you've checked out portfolios of all the artists in your area and nobody does the style that you like, you're gonna have to travel. I myself have traveled all the way across Australia. So four hour flights each way, accommodation, eight, nine, ten times in my life to get tattoos of artists that I really, really enjoy. And the important thing to remember is that it's there forever. So if it does mean that you have to save up twice the amount of money and you wait, have to wait twice the amount of time to get in, then that's just something that you're going to have to do. Otherwise, if you settle for an artist that doesn't specialize in the style that you want, you may end up regretting your tattoo, having to pay for laser. It is much, much more worthwhile to travel to find the artist that you completely love. And that way you know that you're going to get a tattoo that really, that you're gonna love forever. Customized tattoo. Do you draw it up on the day of the tattoo appointment or beforehand? This is completely different for every single artist. Some artists go through a process where they like to draw up beforehand, cross check the design with the client, take it back, do alterations, cross check it with the client. I don't do that. Uh, I draw it up the night before or the day of the tattoo appointment. And because it's all done digitally, my clients can come in, look at the design. If they're happy to go ahead, we size it up and put it on. If they wanna make changes, that's cool also. I always budget in extra time to make changes. There's a whole huge amount of reasons that tattoo, a lot of tattoo artists don't provide designs to the client beforehand. Just a few quickly is because there's the possibility that if you email the client the design, they could take it to another tattoo artist and have them tattoo it for cheaper. Your design could get reposted on the internet and taken by another tattoo artist for another client because clients are more likely to micromanage and nitpick the design if they've got a week to stare at it and then we end up redrawing it six, seven, eight, nine, ten times and that takes a lot of time and a lot of tattoo artists don't charge for drawing time. So if we work with the client and if as a client you seek out the artist that you want and you trust them and if you check their portfolio there shouldn't be an issue if you've had a consultation and you've given them all the information that you want and all your reference images and given the artist a really holistic idea of what you want in your piece then there really shouldn't be a lot of room for error so if you go in and you hate the design of course there's no obligation for you to get it tattooed just say to your artist listen i'm really sorry this is nothing like what I wanted, even though we had a consultation. Perhaps keep my deposit 
I'll put down another deposit and we'll redraw it and reschedule for another day. We're not going to force you to get something tattooed. It's really, really important that you bring it up if you don't like it. A lot of people get a little bit scared and a little bit intimidated when they get into the tattoo studio, but definitely don't feel like you are obliged to get something tattooed. On the other side of things, most of the time you'll be able to show up on the day of the appointment. They will show you the design and like I said, if you've given them all the details correctly and all the good references and you trust them and it's their style, then there shouldn't be any problem. You probably make a couple of little design changes here and there, especially if it's digitally, it only takes seconds. You don't have to redraw the whole design like we did five years ago before iPads. No worries. Ways to deal with tattoo shock after a big piece. I have experienced this myself, having had my entire back tattooed. I used to travel a long way away to get it tattooed and sit uh, for relatively long sessions and then you start getting the shakes and then you start feeling uncomfortable and you every time you stand up you feel like you're gonna pass out and you all the color drops out of your face it's it's shock it's your body going into some kind of shock you really really need to take care of your body and your immune system leading up to a tattoo but if you do experience a little bit of shock or a little bit of adrenaline or something like that there are a couple of ways that you can lessen the effects firstly would be to get warm uh, make sure you, you take warm clothes to a tattoo appointment because a lot of the time tattoo parlors are quite cold And when you get the adrenaline shakes, it's kind of nice to have like heavy clothes to kind of like calm you down Another important tip is to first of all eat before your tattoo appointment But also maybe bring some lollies or something sugary like a bottle of soft drink or something like that So that you can keep your blood sugar steady through the tattoo to prevent that shock But if you do feel like you're going into shock sugar and carbohydrates definitely helps at that point Point. So have a muffin, have a lolly, have a bottle of soft drink, something sugary just to boost that up and you'd really, really be surprised how much better you'll feel. And then once you leave the tattoo studio, try and get a good carbohydrate rich meal straight afterwards if you can, especially if it's a big session and you'll feel much better. I still have a few questions to get through, so I'll try and get through them quickly. So what are the worst places to get a tattoo? Like places that wear off faster. Palms, sides of the palms, um, same with the feet, soles of the feet, and along the sides of your feet. So there's kind of like a little ridge area that your artist should know about. So if you're a girl where like ballet flats are, you wouldn't tattoo anywhere underneath that. <laughs> because it will just wear off. Anywhere that has like a constant wear and tear, like perhaps if you wear a tight watch all the time in the same area over the years, that's probably going to deteriorate the tattoo in that spot. Elbows, knees, ankles, anything that's going to rub on anything. Um, also anything that sees the sun a lot. So where the sun directly hits, I find along my shoulders and upper back has probably experienced the worst fade out of all of my tattoos and perhaps like on the outside of the arm as well. But if you take care to apply sunscreen and just be mindful of the sun, then you shouldn't have those dramas. Unfortunately, with the elbows and knees and ankles and feet and hands, those things are just to do with skin regeneration and also wear and tear from, you know, daily traffic. So that's, uh, if you're prone to hard, leathery skin around those areas, you're probably not going to have a very good success rate in getting your tattoo to hold in. Should first timers opt to something small to see if they can take the pain tolerance first? So this is something that as an individual you really need to work out. If you know that you have a really low pain threshold, probably don't throw yourself into a full day chest piece session straight off the bat. If you do know you have a history of low pain threshold, just start with something small. If you have no idea what your pain threshold is, start with something small. If you know you've been through a bit of wear and tear in your life and you've had accidents and you've dealt with it and you're okay with pain and you really really want this tattoo then you'll be fine you'll be mentally equipped to deal with it i definitely think it's more of a mental preparation kind of deal with first timers if you're feeling nervous definitely start with a small one if you're feeling prepared but confident, not overconfident, but prepared confident, you know, you definitely, you've been told it's going to hurt, you know it's going to hurt, but you really want this piece, you're going to dedicate to sitting through it, you've prepared yourself watching YouTube videos and that kind of thing, you know basically what to expect, then it should be okay to start off with a bigger piece if you're not the kind of person that wants little pieces here and there until you work up to big pieces. It's all about the mental preparation, it really, really is. I've always found tattoo equipment and the different types interesting, would love to learn more. So if you have a look on my channel, I do have a video on the difference between silent tattoo machines and noisy tattoo machines, i.e. 
rotary and coil machines. That gives a little bit of information, but a lot of the time it's kind of like industry secrets. Uh, we're not going to put out on the internet how to use them um, because you really need to be qualified. But definitely they're so interesting. The machines are so interesting. The rotary machines have cam engines. Uh, coil machines run on magnetic coils. You might be able to find information on YouTube about, you know, more about how the machines actually work and how they came to be like a coil machine was originally altered from like a vintage doorbell sort of setup and then they re-rigged it to uh, operate as a tattoo machine. So that's super interesting. I've heard, you know, in prison people making tattoo machines out of uh, VCR motors, um, which I guess would be like a rotary kind of deal. So super, super interesting. Uh, look it up. It's more information than I can give you anyway. So I hope that this answered some of your questions. If you do have any more questions, hit me up on my Instagram page or drop a comment in the box below and I will answer them in a future question and answer video. So if you want to see some of my work, pop over to my Instagram, Hayley Tattooer, and please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Thanks.